So there are benefits in having like a studio studio setup. You know, there's just it's all there, and you just sit in, and then you don't you don't have all that setup time. But all right, I think we're ready. I'm ready. Are you ready? Are we ready? <clears throat> all right. Boom. We're right in the middle of it. So we are next week now. Yep. The puzzle has still not not progressed. Actually, I think there's one less piece because I think Yaya came down and I I think oh, I saw her yeah. undo something and I don't know why. <laughs> Is that a thing? That you guys are going backwards. No, she's you sabotaging you. <laughs> she likes me that much. Or she's or, or 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 she's like that one's wrong. And I was like, but it's what, together. It wait, can't wait, be. What was uh, Ulysses' wife's name? That you know, because she would undo. Greek I mythology. I don't know that. Oh, I'm sorry. When Ulysses was gone, I mean, like she had Penelope. Okay. Penelope. So that's what she's doing. So she was. Uh, everybody declared Ulysses to be dead. So because she was a queen, she had to be uh, married to. Uh, Enfin, there were going to be a fight and a war again in that particular uh, fight on the country, but at the time it was a kingdom. Area, yeah. yeah, and so she uh, promised to marry one of the pretendants and everything to calm the whole uh, kingdom. Once she had finished, I think it was a piece of cloth or something like that. And so she would do it during the day, but at night, undo, undo it. it at night and everything so she could make it last, hoping Ulysses would show up. <laughs> <laughs> That's when at the, um, at the last, you know, when he fires the arrows through the axes uh -huh. and then he kills everybody in the room. All those guys were the pretendants. Okay. So this is Yaya's anyway. way of, pres I'm pretty of sure. preserving the time she gets to spend with Kayla it, doing the puzzle. That's what it I means. believe so. It's like, if I keep on doing it, we'll never finish this project. Exactly. That's much sweeter I'll, than I'll just fucking with you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> As it comes out of love. I, no question. <laughs> So we, we talked last week in the beginning about a thing we never got to because that's yes. the most Julian thing that we do yep, around here. Pretty much. Um, we get into something else. Yes. So uh, as, as I prefer it to be that way, because there's no point in rushing exactly. into something if you want to talk about something else. But now we got the episode to just give it us. The worst thing is, is we teased that we were going to have Andrew on the next episode. But I don't know. Fuck you all. Wait another week. Yes. You'll be fine. He, he, he'll get there. Because we're still going to see him tomorrow. Yeah, we'll see him tomorrow. So it's yeah, fine yeah. to us. Yeah, exactly. Um, so let's get into this. Uh, let me give the background because of what you. No, said plus it's we are starting officially the Strong Fit Peer Review. This is the Strong Fit Peer Review. This is the number one. Part one. Exactly. These are the things actually. I'm thinking out loud. If we were to sell this podcast, this you'd have to pay extra money for. But the, we don't. The peer review you have to pay for it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, but this is a thing that Julian sent me yesterday Pay morning, yeah. and it was a study that I read. And I interpret it still differently than what they said, totally. but was still incomplete because you, I'm basing it off of two conclusions. Well, so first of all, we have to explain one thing. It's an awesome study that has linked uh, stuff I've been talking about for a long time and in a purely physio physiological way, the access from the brain to the sympathetic nervous system mm -hmm. and what it does and how we, in that case, fat, how it influences fat loss. So all that stuff, which is a great, great piece of empirical evidence to what we talk about all the time. That is not the problem. And the studies done well and all that stuff. That's not the problem. The problem is the, what the studies actually um, is done for almost, like what it shows, and the conclusion drawn from it. That's where the problem mm -hmm. is. And I don't think it's by accident that the conclusion does not match the findings of the study. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll so explain, let's, but mm. let's let's dive let's dive right into what is on there though. Like, how, right, so what what was this? Study? Yeah, so I'm going to read it, right? And um, <coughs> I think as we go, I should explain the stuff that are uh, harder to understand. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm going to read it, then read the conclusion, then I'll explain first of all the parts of the study where there are certain things that are a bit v uh, not precise enough for what I would like, yeah. right? So from my, my perspective, I'll explain what, to me, what it says, mm -hmm. what, what it shows, because it's some very, very important part, and especially their significance, I think, is huge. And, and the then parts that really matter to what you work on, too. Yes, and then we're going to talk about the conclusion and why they drew it the way they drew, because I believe there's some a bit of a malicious intent there. I believe it, too. Yeah. <laughs> And it's actually a good indicator, though, of the trap you can fall in if you don't. Welcome to the if medical you don't world. Really yep. take a, take and try to. It'll show get you in the why you cannot just read the abstract of a study. Yeah, 
yeah. because that's that's where the damage is being done, yeah. not in the study itself, which is very pernicious in a way because the study can be perfect, but all you got to do is switch a few words. Should, and and this isn't isn't unlike when we we had talked before about how you can end up with this massive confirmation bias because I could Google search for what this study's mm -hmm. conclusion is and pop up with this study to validate mm -hmm. that thing, except that is not what this says. This is how they basically said smoking is not bad for you. Mm -hmm. Exactly that. They do a real study, a correct study, but they falsify the conclusion in a way just by, not even like blatantly falsifying, just by making, drawing conclusion they cannot draw they cannot draw or just changing the way to formulate the conclusion and then suddenly they take that little loop like this yeah. and then you can make it say whatever you want yeah. and and then you end up in this feedback loop of just fitting your own feeding your own shit which is what we run into often with people wanting a study is you, can just, is you can just google for something you want and that's not any different than you could search for uh what's better coke or pepsi Right? However, yeah, who is it what paid? you can do yeah. is you can Google Pepsi is trash. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you're just going to live in that world. And, no, but even and if it's you just going to say that Pepsi is better If you say what is better, time. Pepsi or Coke, it was like, okay, so you look at a study. But at some point, we have to see who's paying for the study. If Coke is paying for the study, <laughs> chances are it's saying that Coke is yeah. better. It's funny how that works. Yeah. 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 And uh, by the way, and as we show, the study can be valid. Mm hmm that's not the problem. The problem is not the study. The problem is the conclusion. Yeah. yeah. All right. Let's roll. All right. So, um, I, so you tell me what needs to be explained. Because I know most of this, but to some people, it's going to be, even the way they phrase it, it's going to be fucking, okay. it's so, going to be a la-la land. I mean, so, a brain melanocortin vagus axis mediates adipose tissue expansion independently of energy intake. So, that's monstrous so what it says is the brain melanocortin uh, vagus axis what they're talking about is activation of the sympathetic versus the parasympathetic nervous system mediates adipose tissue expansion so that means mediates whether you're going to gain fat or lose fat independently of energy intake independently of how much food you you ingest so so in, th in this part that's the title. I understood. That's the yeah. title. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> yes, no, that's why. Like, <laughs> isn't it's that right? I sure nailed that one, and you're like, that's the fucking title. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. But, but, but that does take some understanding. For, well, yeah, because no one knows what the brain melanocortin yeah. axis is. Right. It's just... Um, but the nervous system state, parasympathetic versus sympathetic, yeah, okay, so is this, going to have a direct effect on adipose tissue, which is fat tissue under the skin. Important part, what they're saying, the brain axis, what they mean by that is the efferent system of mm -hmm. both, right? So afferent is the body telling the brain, the brain telling the body is the efferent system. When they're talking about that axis, by that they mean the brain triggering the sympathetic or triggering the parasympathetic, right, which they're going to do independently, will have an effect on whether you gain or lose fat regardless of what you eat, of, yeah. not what you eat, of how much of, uh, in that case, it's even that it's not energy intake is independently of energy intake of a high fat diet yeah because that only works in a high fat diet yeah that's the, that's the basis of the stuff is does it matter how so you can win or uh, you can lose or gain fat mass regardless of how much fat you actually ingest it is in there's nothing between calorie intake of fat versus where it makes you or lose fat it's a nervous system thing that's the stuff. So highlight starts by saying vagal signals contribute to obesity due to MC4R deficiency or high fat feeding. No, it doesn't. Okay, so that's the highlight. Say, do I start with that? That's not what he says. You have to be very careful because he says vagal signal contribute to obesity basically due to a high fat feeding. Yes and no. It's not just vagal signals. It's vagal signals in a very, very spe specific environment where there is no stimulus of the sympathetic through the, the, the brain melanocortin axis. So it's, it's already it's a problem. Yeah. It's not the same. You can't say vagal signals. You have to say vagal signal without the counterparty of the sympathetic because vagus nerve is parasympathetic. So maybe we can give a background. Yeah. The vagus nerve is a highway of information between the the CNS, peripheral, and uh, enteric nervous system. And uh, it's, a, it's an extremely important thing that allows us to socialize. Basically, yes, it controls the muscles of your face, but also digestion, and a, a huge, not digestion, but signals to digestion. Or it's a huge superhighway information, extremely important to us. 
uh, it's on the parasympathetic side. The sympathetic side has its own nerve system that does specific. When you, the brain to activate the, the sympathetic nervous system does it through the melanocortin axis. Right. So what they're saying is that the vagal signal, when there is no uh, stimulus of the sympathetic, will cause fat uh, gain, fat mass gain. Yeah. Right. But that's not exactly what the highlight says. Yeah. So that's and we're going to go into that. That's already end. where you were sort of running into situations. So when I read that, where, I was like, what that is sounds what's weird. Said. Yeah, that's not okay. A brain <coughs> melanocortin vagus axis regulates fat mass independently of caraway intake. That's true. That's okay. Vagal signals promote lipogenesis or cell proliferation of white adipo adipose tissue. Yes. Yes, in a very specific environment. Again, you have to understand the context. Right? You have to put all this into context. So vagal signal means the parasympathetic side of the nervous system can promote fat mass gain uh, of white adipose tissue uh, in that specific environment which is very important because it's going to go into the arch and all that stuff. But so that, those are the highlights. Summary. The melanocortin system is a brain circuit that influences energy balance by regulating energy intake and expenditure. In addition, the brain melanocortin, oops, sorry, it reset. In addition, the brain melanocortin system controls adipose tissue metabolism to optimize fuel mobilization and storage. Cool so far? Mm -hmm. Okay. Specifically, increased brain melanocortin signaling or negative energy balance promotes lipid mobilization by increasing sympathetic nervous system input to adipose tissue. What they mean by negative energy balance is they mean this, um, fasting. Deficit, yeah. Yeah, they mean fasting. Yeah. Okay. So what they're saying right there is that fasting increases the sympathetic nervous system input toward using fat as fuel. So we know that. That's yeah. why fasting basically makes you lose fat. Because why? Because it activates the, the sympathetic nervous system, which is a fight mode. By the way, the problem in this, in they say the nervous, the sympathetic nervous system, they are not making a distinction between fight and flight. That's a problem. That they don't go into that into that study because usually in the medical world they don't make a difference between fight and flight. That's a huge <coughs> problem because fight and flight is not the same. Fight you'll see towards serotonin. Flight is cortisol. There, there are huge differences between the two. So. Uh, you'll have to trust me on this. When we're going to talk about the, the sympathetic nervous system in this, we're talking about the fight mode, not the flight mode. Fight is you want to be there. So in that particular case, it means fight. I, uh, as we, we go, we'll touch on the difference yeah. kind of between that and how that applies with like yeah. what I sent but, you last night. Yeah, exactly. We'll touch on that at the end. For now, when this, when I say sympathetic, I mean fight. Right? And it matters. Fight and flight are not the same. Some people out there are trying to join them together. It is not that simple. So, um, so by that, they means basically that fasting promotes the fight mode. Why? Because f uh, f the fight mode is wanting to be there. It's hunting. Right? That's what fasting does. It makes you hungry, so you want to go hunt. Mm -hmm. So that's what basically that just said. In contrast, calorie independent mechanisms favoring energy storage are less understood. So that means that in contrast, um, a system that make you fat regardless of how much food you eat are less understood. But that means there are systems out there that will make you gain weight regardless of how much food you eat. So it's, uh, what they're saying is not about calories in, calories out. That the nervous system has stuff built in it that making, can make you gain fat regardless of calories in versus calories out. So that's a very important part because most people think it's calorie in versus calorie out and that's all the body does. That was my argument with the fetus in Aruba. Mm -hmm. And all those guys, they keep saying it's all about calories in versus calories out. No, it's not. The nervous system has a huge play on whether you're going to lose or gain fat regardless of how much you're eating. Yeah. That's what he says right there. See, it's not me. It's the fucking... Uh, sure, just know, Google that, it. That side of that argument is a thing that for, for a lot of years, though, that was... I mean, I argued that side of things yeah. often. I argue um, against it yeah, often. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I remember... All, but, but that is because we talk science in a vacuum because there are plenty of studies that dictate, oh, a caloric deficit, this and that. But it's since none of that is in the context of the nervous system state, it's very easy to find information that's just going to, that you can just parrot that says that. Yeah. So here we demonstrate that reduction of brain melanocortin signaling actually promotes fat mass gain by activating the lipogenic program and adipocyte and endothelial cell proliferation in white fast deposit independently of calorie intake via efferent nerve fibers conveyed by the common hypothetic branch of the vagus nerve. I might have to explain that one. <laughs> we demonstrate the reduction of the brain 
melanocortin signaling act actively promotes fat mass gain. So we demonstrate that suppression of the sympathetic nervous system, activation of the sympathetic nervous system, so uh, activation of the fight mode, will promote fat mass gain by activating the lipogenic program and adipocyte and endocellular cell population in what fat uh, depots independently of calorie intake. So that basically it promotes the fat gaining mechanism that we have independently of calorie intake via if... Yep. So this, if you are suppressing the fight, fight mode, mode, you gain fat. Fat is going to come up, which means regardless not enough, of fight, what, like, not regardless, enough fight, you're inherently going to be biased towards gaining more fat. No, not biased. You, you will, will gain more fat. That's yes, correct. Yep, yep. So it goes biased to while gaining more fat means if you eat... By bias, I'm, I actually mean the, the ratio between fat and muscle you would gain. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but like, that's, where, that, the, that that's where the danger is. It's yeah. by saying, by saying biased right. to a while that people will take it into if you eat too much, you most likely will get fat. No, that's not what he says. Okay. He says that regardless of, of how much you eat, you will gain fat. Okay. Again, we have to make that point every time because people still think is, the system is what do I do with the extra calorie? No. Regardless of calories, even if you're under, you're still going to gain fat. So you'll yeah. burn more muscle, but still gain fat. Gotcha. That's the system that we have that is independent <coughs> of how much you eat. Gotcha. That's very important for the study. Um, via efferent nerve fibers conveyed by the common hepatic branch of the vagus nerve. What they mean by uh, efferent nerve fibers is, again, it's the efferent part of the nerve, it's brain to the body, conveyed by the common hepatic branch of the vagus nerve. Basically, by the, so the efferent part, which is called a ventral vagus nerve, uh, that's what we're talking about. So that, by that, what do they mean? They mean they're going to suppress the sympathetic on one side and then they're going to activate the parasympathetic on the other. When that happens, when you have parasympathetic lifting versus sympathetic going down, you gain fat regardless of how much you eat. Understand that, that. That's, what they, that's what they meant. Those vaguely regulated obesogenic signals also contribute to the fat mass gain follow, following chronic high-fat diet feeding. These data reveal... This, yeah, that's where I have it. Anyway, this data reveal a physiological mechanism where, whereby the brain controls energy stores that may contribute to increased susceptibility to obesity. So what they're saying is those vaguely regulated obesogenic signals, that means that the signals being sent through the vagus nerve, so in a parasympathetic state, contribute to getting fat. Uh, once following chronic high-fat diet feeding, which means... What they're going to do is they're going to give a high fat diet to rats basically and by stimulating the vagus nerve they're going to promote the capacity to store fat right so the, the way they're phrasing it or this um the brain control energy store that may contribute to an increased sensitivity to obesity that's my problem with the study we can go into it is that from there by saying you reduce the fat you activate the vagus nerve you get you're going to store fat on a high fat diet, regardless of calorie intake. So even if you have a little bit of fat, high fat diet, they mean percentage wise. Yeah. What it means is that if you activate the vagus nerve and you decrease the fat, so, and then you feed people a high fat diet percentage wise, even if there's not much fat, you're gonna basically gain a lot of fat mass from that. So even if the overall amount of We'll call it, say just calories that is consumed. Mm -hmm. It's the ratio that they're saying that just a simply higher fat. They're going to the conclusion that a higher fat ratio, fat versus yeah, carbs, but protein. So what they're doing is they're phrasing it in a way to say high fat diet makes you fat. Correct. And Which, that's, and that's, that's not true. That that's not what he says. to very early on, but the results. That's are not what not he says. Bad. Yeah. So for example, the highlight is vaginal signals contribute to obesity due to high fat feeding. Fuck no. That's not what he says. It says that um, vaginal signals once the sympathetic is turned off in a high fat diet will contribute to fat mass gain. Yeah, in, a, in that context only, that is not to say a high fat diet will make you fat. Yeah. So it's, anyway. It's kind of the situation of, I think often, and, and we run into this a few times, where they just kind of put the cart in front of the horse too. Yeah, well, they take an association no, so they, and then they Yeah, they, they have through. a graphical abstract that is here. And all of this will have, uh, will also have uh, the links. So go, and then what you see here, right? It says high fat diet. And then they put a, that interrogation point brain melanocortin signaling goes down. A high fat diet does not necessarily mean bringing down the, the melanocortin signaling. Is that's what they did in the study. They suppressed that part on rats by cutting it off. Mm -hmm. That is not to say that a high fat diet causes a drop in sympathetic signaling. 
right? So if a per so w w when you say that, that essentially does mean though, like if it was in out in in nature or in the wild, the only way that's going to cause that is truly with just having a lower sympathetic state and higher parasympathetic. Yeah, but so in correct? nature, but they that's what the code said. The rats do that. Yes, so they, exactly. So yeah. they cut it off. So that's why we talk about the arch. But all it shows is that basically we need an arch between the both. Mm -hmm. We need tension in the sympathetic and tension in the parasympathetic. That's really what it shows. But what they're saying is that the high fat diet will promote vagal activity, which is true. Like I talked about in the nutrition protocol a lot. The high fat, especially saturated fats, if you go through the enteric nervous system, right, that's the the uh, bacteroids in the gut and everything ha seems that protein and, and uh, saturated fats create a response in the parasympathetic side. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go back to the podcast we did about the gut flora. And so in that sense, a high fat diet would promote vagal activity, would promote the parasympathetic side. That's one of the cornerstones of the nutrition protocol we have at StrongFit is the fact that saturated fats promote the parasympathetic. And it says right here, see, I'm not crazy, right? So. Then they go there, adipose tissue expansion. Yes, in a vacuum, if you were to just promote the vagus nerve, so just in a parasympathetic, you would have a greater fat mass gain in a vacuum, right? That's not how the body is designed, but in a vacuum, it happens like that, right? Which could lead to obesity. If you were to abuse it, yes. But again, that is not how the body works. It just works in that particular context. So you cannot draw the conclusion that a high fat diet will promote obesity based on that because the body does not work like that because we do have a sympathetic side. Mm -hmm. So that is true that a high fat diet without the counteragent of the sympathetic most likely will make you fat. But that's basically saying that a high fat diet without any exercise, without any sympathetic driver during the day, will promote fat mass gain regardless of how much food you eat. Yeah, so get your ass off of the get exactly. your ass of the So couch. you spend all day with a low heart rate, inactive. No, but that, what it means <laughs> is know, like even if you do yoga and uh, have a high fat diet, the extra fat layer that you cannot lose does not come the fact so from the diet. From the fat. It does not come from the it does not mean that you should starve yourself more. It, sh it means that you need to push the training higher to a higher ground until you get into the fight mode. It just tells you that you need the fight mode, basically, okay. in order to lose fat. Which <laughs> makes sense. All right. So then they go the other way. So they go brain metal signaling means drop in sympathetic activity. Right. So intake goes up. You have a calorie surplus that can, that can lead to obesity. Yes, because once you have the sympathetic activity goes down, you spend less energy, right? Your high fat diet means your intake went up, so calorie surplus means obesity. And what it says right here is that the sympathetic activity, the fight mode, leads to adipose tissue lipolysis. So it means that you burn less fat. And so all this could lead to obesity, right? That's, which is true. Again, kind taken of, separately yeah. out of context, that's very true, but you have to be very careful to not associate high fat diet and obesity. What it says is like if you have a high fat diet and do not go toward the fight mode during the day, you will not burn fat. But if you take it like they're doing on the vagus nerve, like let's go on the sympathetic, it means that an increase in fight mode will allow you to burn fat regardless of calorie intake. That means if you eat the same and you go toward intensity workout, you'll burn fat. So that means that you don't have to eat less. You just have to train harder. That doesn't mean more, right? That's it just means, and that's the part we're going to talk at the end, is like it means that your, the intent of the workout is what makes a difference. Not the duration, not the volume, not what you do, how you do it. What this says, that it's not what you do, it's how you do it that matters. That how you go at your workout will decide whether you uh, burn fat or not. So that's the difference between fight and flight. Is fight, you want to be there. Flight, you don't. What they're talking about here is going in fat. So that means that a workout where you want to be there will allow you to burn fat. A workout where you don't want to be there won't. So when you go to the gym and you punish yourself, hating the workout and never investing yourself mentally, never wanting to be there, never fucking attacking like I'm going to kill that bitch, you won't burn fat. That means that those 30, 40 minute workout that you're putting yourself through, enduring it instead of attacking them because you do what you have to do, you check the boxes, sweating a lot, won't allow you to burn fat. 
the only thing that does is pushing the sympathetic activity higher in that case too because remember the, the brain middle cortical axis the talking that they're talking about is the brain ordering the body to do more so if you're weak here and just think you have to do a 30 minute workout just moving without pushing the intensity and get results you're wrong that's what this says it's like you're gonna have to invest yourself mentally into your workout fucking attacking it and then will you burn fat regardless of calorie intake and if you always always avoid that always then you're gonna end if you're up a pacer fat. if yeah. you're a pacer right and you try to i don't like stress or i don't like this or whatever like i'm already anxious or stuff like that all you're doing is storing more fat because you're diminishing the sympathetic response while trying to bring up the vagus nerve on the other side and that will make you store fat which is why we talk often about people falling into the you know i call it the cardio trap is that there's nothing yeah. wrong with cardio except that how, eventually how you, do you become efficient at it your capacity becomes very high and then you never ever ever push any real intensity for yourself which means you just kind of are doing nah the, the problem is this not what you do it's how on. you do it exactly. that's really what you don't want to hear if you do that is that it's not what you do it's how you do it yeah. it's not checking boxes it's because doing how twice much as are you much cardio doesn't do without shit. hitting intensity may give you five percent further results sometimes but not even for long yeah so because and if anything over time it'll make you gain more fat yeah because most likely it'll make you eat more uh, and again you, you're and promoting the vagus nerve instead of the sympathetic response which over time as it shows right as don't believe me look at the graph the vagus nerve will promote fat mass gain and there's a conditioning like a yes, pavlovian right. conditioning to this yes, a little bit too where having. where it's like you just now it just becomes a thing that you're it's a becomes a very difficult thing to break then because you you just and, repeat and, but again the, the biggest problem is you never committed yeah you got into it saying i gotta do what i gotta do yeah. no it's like going to school and listening memorizing answering the test but never learning anything it's getting information over knowledge Right, we talk about it a lot. Mm -hmm. It's thinking you read a book or a study and understand what you're talking about. No, you understand once you do the stuff, not just by reading the stuff. And it's it's the same principle. And it's just having the wrong tool to, for the problem. You know, that's it's the body doesn't work like that. Yeah. We are not built like that. We are built for intent. That means that if you do a three minute workout like friend and you put you invest yourself and you fucking kill the thing and finish on the ground ring with a tremendous a sympathetic response you will burn more fat you will burn fat whereas if you do cardio hating yourself while doing the 30 minutes you will gain fat because you'll put yourself in flight you'll have water retention from the cortisol and all that stuff and basically the lessening <coughs> of the sympathetic response means you are activating the fat gain mechanism instead of the fat loss mechanism we have a fat loss mechanism that is activated through fight you can't cardio your way out of that one on the contrary you're going to cardio your way into gaining fat mm -hmm. yeah that's what it says right there so where do we go next all right so introduction oh boy yeah energy homeostasis is achieved through the coordinated and integrated activity of numerous processes including food intake energy expenditure the flu the flux of energy rich fuels among the intestine blood storage organs another mechanism that's easy enough while numerous brain circuits influence one or several of these processes of particular note is a brain melanocortin system which receives sensory input from throughout the body indicating current metabolic status and in turn coordinates many of the pro processes that influence energy homeostasis all right it is well known that the melanocortin system regulates both energy intake and expenditure Signaling through the melanocortin 4 receptors, that's what they call the MC4, directly controls feeding behavior. That's known. Brain melanocortin signaling also, directs, uh, also directly regulates adipose tissue mass independently of calorie intake via direct efferent innervation of peripheral tissues by the sympathetic nervous system. We and others have demonstrated that increased brain melanocortin signaling enhances sympathetic output from the brain. Yeah, no shit. That's what it means. A key target of this innervation is adipose tissue since when sympathetic activity increases, fat cells undergo liposis, sorry, lipolysis, releasing stored fat during periods of negative energy balance. The period of negati negative... Hold on, that yeah. last sentence I want yeah. you to repeat there. The yeah. A key target of this innervation of, is adipose tissue since when sympathetic activity increases, fat cells undergo lipolysis releasing stored fat during periods of negative energy balance so if you're negative you have a negative energy balance and you spend time in an intense sympathetic state in fight 
if you will. Immediately, not immediately, but but the result is basically fat cells are released. Does that mean negative balance? They just mean during the day, like for example, like after right. the training. But what that like does it. mean yeah. is is that that type of training, that type of activity, is not costing you muscle. That's not going no. catabolic. That is. What they're saying is the the harder you train. The, the more, the more fat. fat you burn, but by harder, they mean activation of the sympathetic nervous system. So it means that not so not much the more, harder not you train. Sixty minutes over nine. Exactly. Minutes, whatever. But it means they go the harder you go into fight, mm -hmm. the more fat you burn. Yeah, that's what they mean. And I think that's the very important emphasis yes. that we need to take forward here. Ablation of the sympathetic innervation to specific fat deposit during using surgical, chemical, or genetic methods results in an ability to release store fat and a consequent increase in fat mass adipocyte size and cell proliferation. So what they mean is the sympathetic innervation to specific fat depots. That means they're going to cut the nerve endings to that, mm -hmm. to that area. In contrast to its sympathetic innervation, adipose tissue lacks direct innervation by the parasympathetic vagus nerve. So that means that the, the fat tissue do not have a direct connection to the vagus nerve, where it does to the sympathetic. So that means that the relationship with fat is done to the sympathetic, not the parasympathetic. Uh, nonetheless, there is evidence of parasympathetic involvement in the control of fat mass. Clinical studies have demonstrated that surgical ablation of the abdominal vagus nerve can result in a considerable reduction of body weight. And vagal denervation also linked to increased weight loss following gastrectomy. Yeah, but that doesn't take into account the enteric nervous system. So we're getting into stuff that we don't fully understand. This data suggests that increased vagal activity may have a reciprocal role that to that of the CNS promoting gain of fat mass. Possibly. We just don't know how, since there's no innervation. Mm -hmm. So it just says that once you cut the, the, the vagus nerve, there seems to be, uh, we've we seen weight loss by cutting the vagus nerve. The thing is that we see weight loss, but that means cutting the, cutting the vagus nerve means that cutting the, the, the direct ra route to the enteric nervous system. And what that happens, we see a massive weight loss. The why though can be because of the enteric nervous system and not the vagus nerve. It doesn't mean that the control of the f gaining fat comes from the vagus nerve. It means that it has a role to play in it, but it can very well be the enteric nervous system that is responsible for gaining fat through the, you know, the gut, mm -hmm. all that stuff. That's what the enteric nervous system is. We don't know how that works. This is more likely the enteric nervous system since there is no innervation of the, the vagus nerve into those uh, plus fat then, plus areas. Then you miss out on everything else as far as what that does hormonally. The, the whole picture changes well, once you take the enteric you, Basically, what they're saying is cutting off the, the vagus nerve from the enteric nervous system, which means the gut does not have information. That, and I think that's always so we're going, going back be in the gut floor. And that's now. always going to be a limitation when you're talking about a study that has to use. Well, it has to be mice. limited. Yeah, well, no, but plus even like you, yeah, know you can't mean? do like it on humans. I can't come in and just cut. Exactly. So what 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 the, the the issue is that, and we're going back to the podcast we did on the gut floor and all that stuff. Is the enteric nervous system is far more complex than we understand. Right. That's where all the gut flora is. That's where the the biodome is. And so it seems that there's a relationship between the enteric, like when you remove the enteric system from its connection to the world weight drops completely. So it seems that the enteric nervous system has a connection to gaining fat. And I think on the integrity of the study, really one of the things to mention is that that's not a singular variable like it's represented. No, as they say, that it suggests. Not, yeah, so yeah. that means there is a relationship. There's a difference yeah. between correlation and causation. Yeah. And so that's so they're not, not like, implying causation. Yeah. Uh, they're implying correlation, yeah. which is so, true. There so is you, a correlation. You just, you just remove this from the equation. The problem is you're not just changing one thing. That's why, that's yeah. why it might be correlation and not causation, because yeah. we don't know which one causes which. Consistent with this, vagal blocking therapy can provide significant weight loss in obese patients. Yeah, no shit. Because literally you cut, off, you cut off the stomach from the rest of the body um, from a signal perspective. So. Again, causation versus correlation. But it means there's a relationship between the vagus nerve and the possibility to gain fat, which is true. But we don't know how. Whereas we know full well that there's an inversion between the sympathetic and we know full well that activation of the sympathetic means fat loss, <clears throat> fat burning, if you want. Because of the overall importance of the brain melanocortin um, system in energy balance, we investigated this contribution to vagal innervation of co controlling fat stores. We found that in opposition to the melanocortin dictated 
lipolytic, lip, lipolytic role of the CNS, reduced melanocortin signaling mediates adipose tissue expansion due to increased vagal activity, and that this brain vagus axis, axis contributes to diet induced obesity. Yes, if you remove the, the fight mode, so basically, so I would, okay, let me put it this way. I would agree completely that removing the fight mode, let, let me put it in simple terms, removing the fight mode from your life will promote obesity. I agree completely. Now, what they're saying is that they're basically putting it on a high fat diet. Again, they, there's, there's a way that they're wording it where they're trying to put it on a high fat diet. Because none, of, it looks to me like none of the things that they're really changing. They keep are saying in regardless of calorie intake. Fat, they keep saying this is all regardless of calorie intake. Yeah. So, so, to me, it sounds like it's being paid by the high carb people. I want to blame the high fat diet. Yeah. So it's not to get in an argument which one is best because I don't think either is the best of. Mm -hmm. uh, and what we do basically is mostly a high fat diet, yeah. by the way, compared yeah. to high carbs. For we just sure. use carbs. It's about balance, but like it's fat all day. It's certain quantity versus uh, carbs during training. So. We're basically on both sides of the equation, but if we were to choose, we're mostly on the high fat, mm -hmm. more than on the high carbs, I would say. What's interesting though, is they're make, it's almost like they're drawing, they're manipulating two different sides of this to get to a, a conclusion. Like it's, there's the high fat and the high carb. My, my problem is this, that last and sentence. And then there's the, the nervous system side. So it's, we're, go, we're, we're testing both sides of the nervous system. Yeah, my problem is when they say this brain vagus axis contributes to diet induced obesity. My problem is that sentence. No. Yes. Yes. Not that thing. Yes, it does. What is but, making that thing? Right. Kind of thing. What you're really saying is that there seems to be a balance between the fight, so the sympathetic and the parasympathetic, that both do something. And if you remove one and activate the other, you're going to get obesity. That is true. But you could, that all, all me, all, you could just as, as easily say reducing the fight mode will promote obesity. Yeah, we know that. Reducing. Uh, exercises done correctly promotes obesity. Yeah, yeah we knew that. <laughs> and so basically diet induced in obesity. So basically, um, but that's again, that's regardless of energy intake, right? So that if you have a high fat diet and you don't go into, into fight mode, it will promote obesity. Yeah, but that's not because of the fat. It's because the high, the saturated fat promote the parasympathetic side. And the goal of the parasympathetic side is to build. So therefore, by promoting too much the parasympathetic side and downplaying the sympathetic side, you will go toward fat building instead of fat burning. Yeah, storage, storage. That's storage, what it means. Yeah. That's it. And that I think most people would agree with that statement. Yeah. It just has a tendency to put it on the diet. And it's to me, it's not that simple. As they say, it's not calorie dependent. So, careful on that one. That's that's so where you keep seeing where they keep pointing this because you're reading a thing that covers many things, but it always gets pointed back to a high fat thing. That there's other conclusions, in my opinion, that we're seeing. Yeah. So then they go into the whole testing, right? Which I'm not going to read because it's boring or shit. But it says calorie independent increase again, calorie independent increase in fat mass due to loss of MC4R expression or high fat diet feeding requires the integrity of the vagus nerve. So again, they're saying we need the vagus worm to gain fat. Yes, that's true. But that doesn't mean that the high fat diet. So by the way, um, integrity of the vagus nerve, there is another way to trigger the parasympathetic side is protein. Mm -hmm. So you could add, I would like to do that study instead of high fat, high protein, and I bet you we get the same, the same results. So you could say on this that high fat diet or high protein diet can promote obesity. Yeah. Because if you have a massive amount of <coughs> protein, you will target the, the, so the same stuff to the enteric nervous system, you'll go toward the parasympathetic side. So high fat, high protein diet will promote obesity unless it is countered by an activation of the sympathetic side. So basically the body is a fucking arch. Yeah. yeah, you have the parasympathetic diet, you have the sympathetic diet. If you don't have balance between the two, you're fucked. Yeah. That's it, That's which we've been saying for so long. It's mm -hmm. about balance, people. The body is an arch, you need both sides of the nervous system. If you fuck with only one side, you're gonna get into trouble. If you fuck only with a sympathetic side, you're gonna be a skinny bitch who's gonna bury themselves to death. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it, 
That's it, really what this says. And that is what it comes down to. And though, like you, you know, framed framed in this way, is that really the sympathetic side of the system as it affects body composition on its own, right? Regardless, regardless of calorie of whatever intake. Else, yeah, but, yes. that, but that system, if you it's will, it's not to say that over. Eating too much won't make you fat, mm -hmm. obviously. He's saying that even if we take the calorie in versus calorie out, there are systems in the body that can make you either lose fat or gain fat. Yeah. So that means that if you keep the diet the same, we can either make you gain fat or lose fat with exactly the same diet based on how we train. Yeah. Right. So your diet remaining exactly the same, you can either burn fat or gain fat. It's very important for people to understand. Without eating one more on one more and one less calorie in your diet. Exactly the same, you can gain fat or lose fat based on how you activate the nervous system, which is the base of the strong fit nutrition protocol. Mm -hmm. And it says right there. So after it goes into uh, subdiaphragmatic va uh, vagotomy, so that's cutting the innervation. Yeah, once they get into Transiently the reduces food actions. intake in MCO or KO mice, leading to reduced body weight and fat mass, blah, 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 blah. So to ascertain whether vagal dependent signals regulate fat mass independently of calorie intake, we pair fed wild type. Then they go into basically with a defined low fat diet. Yeah, but I'm curious to know how that goes. With the same number of calories eaten by a group. Then they explain to you how they do the experiment. If you want to go at it, please do. I'm not going to read the whole fucking thing because it's, um, it's crazy. Um, then he proves that the vagus nerves mediates fat mass gain that occurs following reduced brain melanocortin signaling. Again, the fat mass gain that happened was happened after the fight mode was cut off. And then from there, we saw that the vagus nerve was responsible for that. Yes, because the, fat, the fight mode was cut off. So then he goes on and on and on. Then there's all the graphs and then the vagal efferents. So that's the dorsal part, uh, sorry, the ventral part of the vagus nerve. Mediate the control of fat mass by brain melancholic signaling. Yeah, no shit. Um, the common hepatic branch of the vagus nerve mediates the control of fat mass by brain melancholic signaling. Yeah, okay, so it's the same stuff. It's a very long study. It, this is awesome, by the way. Like, I, this is, for me, this is great because it shows all the stuff I've been talking about, independent of calorie. That, that's all the stuff I've been trying to say, put in a study. This is absolutely awesome. Discussion. Brain melanocortin signaling is integral for the control of energy balance. Yes, that's the role of the sympathetic side. Uh, a net reduction of melanocortin receptor activity favors energy intake over expenditure and results in obesity. Yeah, so that means that less sympathetic mode, right, gets you hungrier and eating more. Why? Because we know the sympathetic suppresses appetite. Appetite which is makes, on the which parasympathetic. Which makes the most sense. You know what I mean? Like that's that's pretty common. So a, you appetite, can yes. So trains, like you just crush your okay, shit. Appetite intensely. is high in the parasympathetic. Appetite is low in the sympathetic. That's why after you finish your hard workout, you're not hungry. Yeah. Because you're still it's in the, the sympathetic mode. Thing from your mind. Right. So you want to know? I've been asked. What's the difference between parasympathetic and, symp and sympathetic? How would you test it? Hunger is one. Mm -hmm. That's what this. That's what this means right there. Here, we provide initial and definitive evidence that a brain melanocortin efferent vagal pathway contributes to the control of fat mass gain. That is true. This pathway utilizes ob obesogenic signals to facilitate adipose tissue expansion, both by activation of lipid anabolism and by promoting depot-specific adipocyte proliferation. That's, by the way, we, uh, you want to talk about uh, spot, uh, what do you call that? The spot reduction. reduction. Spot reduction. Yeah. It says, yes, you could by activation of the sympathetic nervous system, you could, and basically by having uh, the fight into certain muscle, right? Mm -hmm. So ET muscle yeah. could, uh, activation of ET muscle could get into spot reduction that bodybuilders have been talking about. Yeah. That's what it says, because I remember the nervous system, the sympathetic has innervation in two specific areas of fat pockets. Mm -hmm. So this shows that through activation of ET muscle, if I'm right about external torque muscle, you could have spot reduction. reduction. That's what it which, says right there. Which the only people that I have ever heard talk about that bodybuilders really are bodybuilders, and the people that come to me from a science direction with that refuse to accept it. Universally, have yeah. not accepted it at whatsoever because it's just. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, I preached it because that's what I know for, for mm -hmm. a long time. That that oh, you just got to yeah. If you got a bunch of fat around your belly, maybe it's just genetics. Keep getting leaner. You'll you'll lose it mm -hmm. as it it'll come off you as it's going to come off you. Yeah. And this is kind of stating that maybe that may not necessarily be the no, case. No, it's true in a vacuum on that side, yeah. but there's also a way to do spot reduction yeah. by innervation, because of the innervation, 
uh, the sympathetic as innervation into specific areas, therefore activation of the sympathetic into that area could result into spot reduction. The question is how do we do that? Right? That's where the IT versus ET muscle could come in. Mm -hmm. If I'm right about that, there is a way to access the sympathetic nervous system through the external torque muscle, which would uh, create spot reduction in that area. Crazy. <laughs> Not really. I've been saying that well. for a long time. <laughs> it's obvious. I mean, Cr uh, crazy in regards to the people that would maybe just call you crazy. <laughs> yeah, for the same people, but they're still going to, even if the old shit says what I said, they're going to say it doesn't, yeah. or that I'm still crazy. So in the, it's just, whatever, I'm just, there's a study, have fun. This data also suggests that components of this axis are regulated during crowding, HFD fe feeding, and contribute to diet-induced obesity. Suggest to you, and I would like to know who's paying for the study. Mm -hmm. It's true, but in a vacuum, it's, again, there's a way to present this, like, hmm. Yeah, these data are consistent with, uh, there's no S on data, do you know that? I just learned something. I always put an S on shit. I always spell data with an S. Really? Yeah. Sorry. I'm French. Okay, whatever. I, we'll get into the French counting to 100 thing later. Yeah, yes, exactly. <laughs> it's not entirely wrong about that. These data are consistent with the early clinical studies that demonstrate that surgical ablation of the vagus nerve at the abdominal level causes a meaningful reduction of body weight. Yeah, we still don't know why. In keeping with this, uh, vagal denervation has been linked to increased weight loss following ga um, gastrectomy. Yeah, no shit. These data are all consistent with the concept that increased vagus nerve activity promotes fat mass gain. Yes, we just don't know how. Consistent with this, vagal blocking therapy has been proposed as a treatment of adult patients with obesity. And that's where I disagree. That, I, that is not consistent, I'm sorry. The, this data... These data are all consistent with the concept that increased vagus nerve activity promotes fat mass gain. You're saying that keep shutting off the vagus nerve creates, see, that's my problem. Shutting off the vagus nerve creates fat gain, so uh, fat loss. So mm -hmm. therefore, activating the vagus nerve more will promote fat gain. That, there's a difference between causation and correlation. They, they're walking a very thin line on that one. Consistent with it, vagal blocking therapy has been proposed as a treatment of adult patients with obesity. Yeah, it's going to work, but that doesn't mean the vagus nerve is the only thing responsible for fat mass gain. What if it's a player that is like three steps removed down the line? Mm -hmm. Right? So what is by cutting the vagus nerve? By the way, cutting the vagus nerve, you're going to fuck with well, that's so what I see. much thing in there. That's what I see with all of this is that each thing that's coming down is a... Somewhere along the line, there's dominoes that are falling. Well, yeah. And you don't know, uh, I don't know where this and is. And the consequences. And, and how many and dominoes fall over when you cut the Vegas And nerve. again, they're jumping to conclusions on a bunch of stuff. Like you can't, uh, yeah, like all they're saying is like if we cut up the Vegas nerve in the stomach, you lose weight. That's true, but that doesn't say, or, that doesn't mean that the Vegas nerve is responsible only, is responsible for the fat gain. It might be another player down the road that the Vegas nerve connects to, for example, the enteric mm -hmm. nervous system. So. Like, basically, they're jumping to conclusion where in a vacuum it's true, except if you do it on human beings, you might fucking destroy a lot of them by not understanding that you're cutting off the signal to something that is far more important than just fat loss. Yeah, especially with, the, with what we talked in the past about that connection with behavior. They're playing with stuff they don't, yeah, they're playing with stuff yeah. they don't understand. It's like saying a lead, paint, lead paint is fine. Yeah. yeah, and 50 years later, everybody had cancer, they go, whoops. Yeah. Uh, the vagus nerve contains afferent and efferent fibers conveying signals between peripheral and the brain. Yes, yeah, so they think the vagus nerve basically is uh, as a dorsal and ventral side and connects the CNS and the peripheral nervous system. Furthermore, ab abdominal vagal branches contain nerve fibers others than those of vagal origin. Yeah. We found that a mass fat gain due to reduced brain melanocortin activity can be prevented by ablating the HVX. Yes, which contains mainly vagal afferent, but also efferent. As w but yeah, but that also cuts your appetite. So anyway, as well, as adve uh, adventitial fibers likely contributed by the, C by the CNS and cutting both subdiaphragmatic vagal trunks, uh, which contain both vagal afferent and efferent, but like sympathetic fibers. Yeah, that would, yeah. So you're basically going to keep the sympathetic fibers, remove, <clears throat> and that way you lose more weight. And in the process, who the fuck knows? 
but not by SDA, which eliminates subdiaphragmatic vagal afferents and partially preserved subdiaphragmatic uh, vagal efferents. Yeah, also. Although somewhat surprising, considering the relatively low contribution of efferent fibers to the HIVX, this data suggests nonetheless that the, obi uh, the obesogenic activity due to reduced brain melanocortin activity is mediated by vagal efferents, which are, at least in the rat, conveyed by that branch. Yeah, yeah, sure. <coughs> Uh, okay, so it keeps on going, but I think... Uh, uh, I think what they did and what they were trying to see, we've covered pretty well. Yeah, yeah, because I, now I we're really going into like stuff to, where... To and then now what they said. <laughs> yeah, like... You know, like the, no, then, then it goes into... The, the problem is after that, we're starting to go into uh, stuff where, honestly, we're touching things we don't know that well. Consistent with preserved findings, gene expression analysis of granodal fats suggests an increase in de novo... Uh, lipid synthesis following the reduction in brain melanocortin signaling. So what they're saying is basically, again, we're going back to the, nerv the nervous system, right? And what it starts to do once we start fucking with it. And so, for example, this includes an increase in the local synthesis of fatty acids and triglycerides, as well as cholesterol, and the indicator of ap um, adipocyte size that can be prevented by SDVX, suggesting specific control of white adipose tissue expansion by the brain melanocortin vagal axis. So again, we're going back to the same stuff, saying like uh, that spot reduction. Mm -hmm. Specific control of white adipose tissue expansion means that the, there are certain parts of the brain that control uh, fat loss or fat gain, depending on which side of the nervous system you're in. Correct. Now with that, that seems to be the general takeaway that you can see from that as you're interpreting, as you look yeah. at it. So right? how, yeah, how did like, I see it? Like The fight mode exactly. allows you to fight burn fat. To burn so fat. it's not just calories in, calories out. Don't get me wrong. If you eat 6,000 calories a day of nuts, you'll get in trouble. Yeah. But the question is, what do you, so what, a question this poses, for example. You eat 6,000 calories of nuts a day. Right, that's a massive amount of fibers, right? That most likely start to shut off all that stuff, right? That's, so you will have carbs, that's gonna cause a problem. So the, my question is, do you gain fat from it because of too much calories in? Or are you gaining fat because that amount of, of fibers and carbs in your system are shutting off certain parts of your nervous system in that case, the fight mode. Once you have that much fiber in your system, 6,000 calories mm -hmm. would be, I don't know, like a pound of nuts or whatever, you're going to force the digestion to work extra hard. That's going to promote the parasympathetic side. That's going to promote the vagus nerve, as they were talking about, that is responsible for gaining fat. Or, and you're gonna or as you say, though, like, like building, which means if you're consuming protein in that capacity, it's... Yeah, and on top of it, like once your stomach starts to blow up like that with all the fibers and everything, it will activate a specific part of the innervation of the sympathetic nervous system will basically will shut off the fight mode because you can't digest that much and fight at the same time. Mm -hmm. So are you gaining fat because of the calories in or are you getting fat because you fucked with your nervous system by eating too much? Yeah. Because when you eat too much, there are certain signals right there that will shut off the sympathetic and put you into flight. Mm -hmm. So which one it is? That's, those are the good questions this poses. Are we getting fat because of the nervous system or just calories in versus calories out? At the minimum, it means calories in versus calories out is not enough to judge your diet. As that is not be. just that. Yeah. Like it might be that, I'm not even entirely sure, right? Because I had periods where I could eat whatever I wanted versus, we all been through those phases, mm -hmm. right? So I'm not even sure it's calories in versus calories out. But at the minimum, it shows that it's not just that that your nervous system has a tremendous impact on whether you're going to gain fat or lose fat based on whether or not you're in a fight mode or not. That's what it says. And I like also the, the, the differentiation between fight and flight in this role as well. They don't talk about it, but, but we that's talked, a strong fit we, stuff and it's a very important point. We had sent you last night, the, it was a clip from the study, which is yep. always dangerous. Just to, <laughs> but, uh, but, but it made, basically they said they went the other way. And they said, like it's very common, they say uh, that, that higher testosterone there leads to, or is, no, they said, is related to a higher level of sympathetic state. And they measured, they showed the markers that they used for mm -hmm. to indicate that. But they said, yes, there is a correlation between that. And they said, but the problem is they have actually seen in many studies that that may actually be the activation of a sympathetic state 
that causes the raise in mm -hmm. testosterone. And they had done studies from physical activity as well as simply watching violent sports like fighting. Winning versus like that. losing. And then, yep, and then so they would do intense matches of like tennis and chess where it's high stakes and they would test the testosterone before, after, during um, of the competitors and they found that the winners testosterone would go up and then the loser's testosterone would you go down. You know where it happens as well, on the lobsters with serotonin levels. Exactly. The you winners get loser. higher serotonin. And I've been talking about this, to me serotonin lives in a fight mode. Yeah. So the higher fight mode means winning. Wanting to be there, that means winning. So yeah. someone who wins, a lobster wins, gets higher serotonin. A human who wins gets higher testosterone. Yeah. To me, there is a relationship. And testosterone, so the, serotonin happens in fight, happens in winning. Yeah. And so if I, if I interrupt that, at whatever moment in somebody's lives and I say, let me check your testosterone, Julian, and Julian has high testosterone and carries around a, and carries around a fair amount of muscle mass. And then I look at someone else who's smaller and having a hard time gaining size and I test theirs and they have low testosterone, I could say, aha, high testosterone is the reason that Julian is able to carry that muscle mass. But that's not the cause. That's one of the yes. tools being used. Yeah, maybe this. I've just been winning more. Yeah, you've been winning. You well, you've also been, put the you've work. been fighting. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, and that's yeah, that the requires difference. you doing it. Yeah. So that that would mean fighting that and losing, and then just avoiding the fight by staying in flight, going in exactly. but failing means you over won't build the muscle. Again. Yeah, it means you, you won't not. build the muscle. So that means like just getting the steroids is not the question. Correct. Like just well, increasing and, and the testosterone. Simply, they yeah. talk about how, and not just in steroids, but why you need to lift heavy weights. Bodybuilders mm -hmm. yeah. will always say this. Yeah, there's rep schemes for hypertrophy and whatever. But if you want to stimulate your hormonal profile, now we understand why. you need to get because under you need to go heavy weight. You need to activate the sympathetic side. So that means that because going into fight means more muscle, less body fat. Yeah. And your body doesn't just adapt based on, I worked this muscle, broke it down, now it goes. You have to exactly. force your body to adapt as a whole. And the explanation I give... speaking. Exactly. And the explanation I give people is, you get under and carry the heaviest yoke you can imagine carrying, uh, your body is good, and you do that frequently enough, not so frequently you break, but frequently mm -hmm. enough, your body has to adapt in some ways, it's not just muscle tissue. It's gonna say, but your mind has to adapt. we gotta do some yes. fucking more man shit, this guy's fucking crazy. We gotta do some winning. <laughs> yeah. That's the key, yeah. is like, because your I mind- Because I can risk losing yes. in these situations. Yeah, and, but your mind has to adapt. You yeah. have to become a better person to do that on a weekly basis. Someone who wants it more, someone who wants to win more, it's going to drive you to become. So that's what we've been saying in the podcast lately so much. It's like getting bigger, getting more muscle, losing fat is an attitude. Mm -hmm. Is You're not going to do that just by manipulating the diet. What you need to do is you need to become a different person. You need to become the person who has more muscle and less body fat. And from what this is saying, it means the person who's capable of achieving a greater fight mode. And That's what it means. So you're not chasing the diet, you're not chasing the workout, you're chasing the person you should become. Yeah. And plus when they talk about with people that do take drugs, where if you have very high level of testosterone, one of the main indicators is you just can carry around a higher level of lean muscle mm -hmm. mass when you have super physiological levels yep. of testosterone than you can at a natural yep. baseline. Why is that? Well, there's talk if you're taking exogenous hormones that there may be causation then from the testosterone yeah. to the sympathetic Well, yeah, state. because you're tricking the so system. So you have a much higher sympathetic state kind of constantly. You're generally yeah. leaning more that that's, way. And that's what and we saw with the steroids is people are more in a sympathetic state yeah. naturally. But that was brought up by, a, by an outside help to do it. Mm -hmm. That is like being in a car makes you go faster. Yeah, you're not running faster. You're yeah. just going faster because you're in a car. But at some point, you're dependent on the car. Yeah. When the car breaks down, you're fucked. So that is, I mean, that is the equivalent to you're just introducing a stimulus a little bit somewhere in the middle of the process. So there's many of other things that can be risks associated with. But I do like that idea that that, that works on that level. In that context, it works... Yeah. In, 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 yeah, in any other. Really, that, that it's, process plays out across the board and it makes sense. Yeah, and that's what we talked about, about the fight versus the flight versus the flow and the freeze, mm -hmm. especially and all that stuff. And that the body first goes through the, the nervous system is what matters. And yeah. triggering the nervous system is the key. And it's not as simple as calori cal calories in versus calories out or going to the gym and just training. Checking the boxes doesn't do it. Like we're yeah. going back to, if you want to make progress, you have to become a new person. Yeah. And pushing hard, finding intensity, but frankly, ending up in flight all the time. 
Yeah, it's just as bad. It's just as bad. I mean, like, you like won't if you produce are not on the testosterone. Attack. If you finish in flight in every workout, I mean, your testosterone goes down. You're gonna produce less muscle and uh, burn fat. less fat. Yeah, and I think I, I see this often with some of the, the truly the biggest, strongest people I've ever met, and some of the biggest, strongest people I've ever like known known mm-hmm. much better than just meeting. Is I will tell you, I've never met a person who I would describe as transcendently strong. Or yeah, extremely large out. that uh, ever you would ever catch speak or act like they are a victim of their training. Yeah. Yes, they when they go to train, their mindset is correct. Their mindset, there's way to smash, and and really the winning losing thing is very much why the concept of no miss lifts. You know what I mean? If you're squatting, yeah, yeah, don't choose the weight that you're It's gonna getting bail, under like, a thousand pound yoke and your femur is bending. Yeah. And it's like, all right, so mentally, imagine what it takes mentally to go like, yeah, I'll take five more steps. Yeah. It takes a mentality that is built over five years of hard work every week. Mm-hmm. You can't show, if you go under a thousand pound yoke, your femurs are bending, you're going to die. Yeah. It takes a mentality built over years to turn yourself into a human being that can keep on walking even though the females are bending. And I also think that... Not a good idea, but... Because I, I know that uh, people will want at some point to reconcile this subject with one of the things we do, well, why do you still sometimes program training to near failure for, say, internal torque muscles, right? Like, yep. why is it okay for me to do bicep curls and some pec flies until I cannot move another rep? That seems like failure. Here's the deal. You go ahead and find failure with the back squat till you can't stand up and get stapled to the fucking floor. You don't do it too often. Then awesome. find yeah. failure with bicep curls. And, to me it's the and same. just because it's failure, those aren't the same things as far as your yeah, nervous system goes. Yeah, and plus, once you're you also, uh, to get the fight, you also need a challenge. Remember, the body needs to be... We used to find fight because the bear was chasing you. That mm-hmm. was the world we lived in not so long ago, where you had tribes coming your way to kill you every six months. So there was a drive toward the, toward the fight mode that was created by your environment. That yeah. does not exist anymore. We do not live in an environment that causes us to fight anymore. So we have to go find it in the gym. And you, you can't win all the time. You have to yeah. also experiment losses to grow and everything. Except as Tyler said, we don't want you to lose on the fucking heavy squat. Yeah. So we're gonna make you lose somewhere else and challenge you to not lose next time. And so th- there's an entire process there that takes place. It's just, you're gonna have to choose your battles. You, you can win a battle and lose the war. Mm-hmm. Right, so that's the key. It's just we have to know where we want you to fail and where we don't want you to fail. Because the idea then is winning the war, which is and the war is you against who you are right now versus who you want to be. The person you are right now has to die. The person you want to be has to live. So that's what the war is. That was the um, burning the questions. Mm-hmm. That was me on the the harness in uh, back in Torrance. He was like, "This is who I am here." The end of the parking lot is who I want to be. I yeah. have to kill the person that is here to become the person I want to be. Yeah. And I have a hundred feet to do it. Yeah. All right, well, let's go there. And that's what burning the question is. By the way, if people tell you they understand what burning the question means, usually they don't, that's what it means. It means killing the Take person that I am. To show you. Yeah, exactly. That's don't what it means. Anything. It means killing <laughs> the person that I am now so I can become the person yeah. that lives at the end of that parking lot. You should lot. be able to show you in less than three minutes at the end without, of the parking lot, without was saying a word, 60 seconds yeah. it took me probably maybe I, I no con- concept yeah. of time at that time, so I don't know what it, how long it takes, but no minutes, idea. minute and a half, right? By uh, my calculation, I think it's like eight years anytime I do it. That's it's how long something it takes. Like that. <laughs> uh, it's a lot of steps I can do that, but that that was the key, right? Is killing who I am now to become the person I want to become, and that is done in fight, right? But that will promote fat loss, gaining muscle, all that stuff, like all the good shit. <laughs> Which is why we yeah. looking jacked and good naked. Yeah. Let's be honest. That's what we all train for. Yeah, start there and build. I've never stuff seen someone uh, looking fat going like, "Hey, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. I'm just gonna keep doing that." Yeah. yeah. At some point, there's like, "I'll fix this eventually." Yeah, exactly. But let me look good. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, I think that's got us through the deal. That's the first uh, Julian's peer review. Yes. Uh, we'll do it. We'll do it more. That doesn't mean send him really boring studies, but if you have something that's interesting, let's hear it. Yeah, actually, uh, I want to <laughs> do the one on emotional balance. That one is really good. And the free energy yeah. principle. That's, that'll be the next one. That's really good. It's a great study. Like, uh, I won't. 
I love the study, so I just want to be able to tell you about it because I think it's great. Yeah. We should do that often, like the, yeah. the good ones. Instead of just putting it on the Strong Fit Book Club, yeah. we could just talk about them on the podcast. Yeah, diving yeah. into it, what it means, and what that, I think it means anyway. Definitely. And there's some, that'd be a cool way to yeah. do podcasts. Plus, that, that'll get easier and easier too as we get to where we're here more often. Yeah, like the, stuff, yeah so. exactly. The cool yeah. podcast. Like, I won't maybe, then I won't read sending, the, Then what'll happen is instead of Julian sending me a message in the morning with a, with a thing I gotta read, he's just gonna say, Sit down. Yeah, <laughs> Turn exactly. on the camera. Yeah, yeah. Well, because the emotional balance is very interesting as well. Yeah. Uh, so I, we can do a podcast on that. Yeah, but by like explaining what the study, who the other people, and stuff like that. Yeah. Maybe you guys will like tell us if you would like that, and then we'll do it more. Yeah, awesome. That sounds like fun. So I will cool. do it. Well, everything you, you need to find is going to be at strongfitequipment.com, strongfitequipment.eu, Manta Fitness for equipment. Uh, also, strongfit.com for the seminars. That's what dropped the ball mm-hmm. on seminar plugs last time. But there you go. Strongfit.com, there's the seminar link. You're going to find all the assessment workshops, mm-hmm. all the stuff. So there will be, we talked briefly about a performance seminar might get announced very soon. Yep. So keep your eye peeled for that. Um, but we still have seminars here in Utrecht. Yeah, we, almost, seminars. we have like three in the States coming up yeah. in the next year. We'll Six, go East Coast. Months. We'll go East Coast in October probably. Yeah. So then January we'll be in San Diego. So here's the deal though. If you're in, say, the New Jersey area, yeah. and let's say you live in... Somewhere, Philly. yeah, in Philly, Philly, in Philly. and yeah. we go to New Jersey. You can't say, "Hey, will you come to Philly?" Yeah, you're like, gonna have hey, to drive an hour and, and a half. To Philly? You're gonna have to drive an hour and a half Sorry. and come see us. Sorry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, I remember. I think there was one where I think we were in California, and then I, I remember getting a message like, "Hey, you guys should come to San Francisco." I'm like, "Well, you should have just fucking went to San Diego yeah. two weeks ago." Actually, dude. he texts me and say like, "Next time you're in uh, SoCal, we'll come." We went to San Diego, we didn't show up. I'm like, all right. <laughs> exactly. So, so, so no, we're not going to go to your town just because you're there. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> you're going to have to come our way. Yeah, so you got to meet us in the middle. So uh, other than that, I think we got everything covered. Yep. Strong Fit One, UK32, Tyler F. And Stone, Richard's Rare Barracuda. Yep. Don't forget, there's at least one of us got to be handsome. Exactly. So. <laughs> and that's me. Bye. Right, thanks a lot. See you next week. Post, it looks like I'm also taking a nap, and this might not have been as bad as the other one. <laughs> the party, like, no, retake that one. Just take a bunch. I'll pick which one you use. Okay.